Hi, I'm Ian Bishop, former Trinidad and Tobago West and West Indies fast bowler. Now a broadcaster, believe it or not. And you are looking at legends in sport on the Axe Television Network. Keep watching. Athletes come and athletes go, and so do our memories. Welcome to Legends in Sports on Axe Television Network. And today we feature Ian Bishop, former Trinidad and Tobago and West Indies cricketer. Ian, it's a pleasure to welcome you to Axe. Thanks for having me. And as I said, Legends in Sport is designed to bring back those who have done well for Trinidad and Tobago or for the Caribbean. So the younger ones who are looking at this this interview will be aware of who our past heroes is. Hence the reason we chose Ian Bishop here this morning. Ian, how did it start it for you? How did it, did you, when did you realize that you wanted to be a cricketer? Because look at your height. I would have thought basketball would have been your first preference. Well, I was a good basketballer at school as well. Okay. Uh, um, but uh, no, cricket has been a part of my family. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, my uncle, Renrick, I say uncle, but he's only a couple of years older than I am. He played for Trinidad and Tobago and various West Indies and Trinidad and Tobago youth teams. His older brother before him also played for Trinidad and Tobago at youth level. Uh, my father regaled us with stories of cricket when I was young and coming up. So cricket has been part and parcel of my family. Um, but we, I never really got into playing seriously until secondary school, okay. which is a bit late for, for some people. What school was it? My boy is intermediate. Um, I had a great sports teacher by the name of Albert King who invited me one day to try out for the class uh, cricket team in the Queen's Park Savannah. And when I batted, I made not. I bowled, I didn't get a wicket. And he still picked me on the class team. I don't know why, but he obviously, you know, God orchestrates things. Now Definitely. you can look back and, and, and realize that God used him, mm -hmm. gave him foresight to, to open a door for me because I really didn't do anything worthy of performing yeah. to get into the school team. And then it just kick-started from there. Yeah. So from the, you went into the Trent Tobago team? I, I sort of became friendly with the senior captain of the school team when I was in form one or form two, mm -hmm. a guy called Kirk Nualo, who was a believer as well. Mm -hmm. And so we formed a little group of about three or four of us who, we loved cricket. Mm -hmm. um, we would gather all sorts of literature and cricket and tapes and cricket and watch them over and over on the weekends until late into the night. Mm -hmm. And as my captain, we trained in season, out of season. We hung out together. We went to church together. Mm -hmm. um, and we just really studied the game together. Mm -hmm. So. Once I got into the school, I went through the school on the 14, on the 16, on the 19, and then into the various North Zone youth level teams. My first overseas tour was a schoolboy, Trinidad and Tobago schoolboy's tour to India. Mm -hmm. Lara, Brian Lara was a part of that tour as well as well as other guys. Mm -hmm. And that kick-started it for me. Um, I never thought I would be a professional cricketer. I was, at that time, I was playing for the love of it. And then... A guy called Kelvin Williams who coaches the Trinidad and Tobago national team. Yeah, current coach. Right? Yeah. Um, when I made the North Zone senior team, Kelvin saw me. He asked me, he became interested. He asked me if I wanted to go to England to play some club cricket. And so he arranged for me to go to the Tyndale Cricket Club, a club that he was playing at, but mm -hmm. he left the previous season. Mm -hmm. And I had a year there in 1987, came back home, made the Trinidad and Tobago senior team, and, and just continued until I made West Indies in 1988. 1988, you made, that was your first um, time call up on the West Indies team. Yeah. What was that like? Wow. Um, unexpected is the first word that comes to mind uh, because I'd played two seasons of, of first class cricket. In 1987, I played for Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. Nothing to write home about. Mm -hmm. Then in 1988, I played my second season and I had about 16 or 17 or 18 wickets. Mm -hmm. And I had actually been on a plane and gone to England to play some more club cricket and as soon as I walked off the plane, the gentleman that came to collect me, uh, he picked me up 
In fact, when I came off the plane, I went on to a bus. And when I got to Newcastle, where I went to play, the guy came to pick me up and he said, I'm sorry that you won't be playing for us this year again. So I was in shock because I just flown across the oceans mm -hmm. to go and play this club cricket. And I said, why? He said, well, you've been selected for the West Indies team. And that shocked me because that was nowhere near what I was expecting. Uh, and I remember going to the place of lodging that they had sort of sought out for me that night and I watched the sun go down and come up and I didn't sleep a wink. I was so excited um, because the very next day I had to go down to London to meet up with the team. So, you know, I ended up meeting up with all these guys that I had read about, that I had seen on TV, that I had paid to come through in the Oval. I wouldn't say jump the wall because I jumped the wall in the Oval once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> Who didn't? You know, like tennis sports, yeah. <laughs> You know, um, the Dujons, the Marshalls, mm -hmm. the Greenwiches, the Haynes, and just sitting in a room with them. I remember sitting there first time and just looking around the room and not saying anything for a couple of days because these were legends of the game and certainly legends in my mind. So it was sort of awe-inspiring. Really.